loads to talk about today, but um, I want to start with Chelsea. We saw the Samu Amarodian deal collapse at the 11th hour um, during or be just before a medical. They're now going for Jao Felix. There's been more reports today that Atletico feel really frustrated at the behavior from Chelsea, even though they might go and pick up Jao Felix. Conor Gallagher's deal is up in the air. I'm going to throw it out to the panel. Whoever wants to go first can go first. Is this a mess or is this smart by Chelsea to walk away from Samu and go for Jao Felix? It's a W deal. So, like, this is uh, some good business, right? Because uh, Samu, what, Amrodian, he's an average player. Um, I think Jao Felix is better than him. But at the same time, I don't actually think they need a Jao Felix. I think he'd be a good signing just for your squad, right? As in, you know, you could have him to rotate. You know, he'd come in on the left. But now that you got Pedro Neto there, right, it's kind of like their attacking options are good at the moment. What Chelsea needs to put money into is a striker that could actually – be in the race for the golden boot which Zhao Felix cannot but overall I mean like he's a good player he already was there what the season before last and I think they want to bring him back then but I think um Atletico Madrid's asking price was just ridiculous but now nah, I think it's a good move um just in terms of building your overall squad even though they already have like 50 players but Zhao Felix he's a good player he is and he played well for Barcelona last season and then I think he fell out with Javi and got dropped but when he was starting on the left wing he was playing really well. i just curious to see where they'll use him if Chelsea bring him. Like, would they use him on the wings? Would they play him as, like, a 10, kind of have him rotate with, like, uh, Nkunku, or would they play him up front? But, yeah, I think they just need a different profile of an attacker. But for their squad, I like it because um, he is a better player than uh, Samu. You know, what confuses me What confuses me is how you go from Samu to saying, all right, I, I won't – I mean, what was the original deal with Samu? I, I hear he, he uh, didn't pass his medicals. Uh, I hear another story where someone said he, he the, uh, Chelsea said he's going to go on loan when he gets to Chelsea and he said he didn't want to go on loan. Like these are the reasons why the contract failed. And, and I'm asking myself, OK, if that contract, if that deal fell through, how do you just turn around and say, I'm, I want y'all, Felix? Like what was your original agreement? Was it a player for player swap with Gallagher and money? Because that's the only time you can turn around on that kind of deal and say, give me y'all, Felix, instead, you know, because the prices have to be different. And if the price is the same, then what's going on? But, you know, it's not my place to – and I don't know what the deal is. But mm -hmm. if you're going to talk about Yao Felix as a player, I say, yes, he's a quality player. And I think he will add um, some value to um, Chelsea. The problem I see is is he – you have Kung Fu on that left. You have Pedro Neto who can play left and right. And then you want to bring Yao Felix in as well. Um, how are you going to rotate all three of them? If Pedro Neto stays fit all season, you're definitely going to want to play Palma on the right, right? And if you – and, and then on the left, Nkunku is not going to want to sit on the bench if he's fit all season for Yao Felix to play on. But I don't know if Yao Felix wants to do the same thing or will Pedro Neto want to sit on the on the bench. Like it's it just becomes too much. I don't understand. It. I don't understand why they need him because I think they already have a lot of quality there. Um, and just like what Will said, I agree with you. They need to go find a striker, like somebody up front. Mm -hmm. They need a striker up front because they have enough firepower on the left and on the right already. Um but yeah, I mean, and they still have Udrick on that left as well. So it's just a, it's a whole bunch of four, almost four or five, you know. Um, and and I hear like they said, if y'all Felix comes, then the Madrike is going to be gone. I've I've heard different things, and I'm just like, it's a, it's it's too. Chelsea's confusing right now. Like I'm just confused. And, 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 and Nobbins, do you think this is a case of it looks confusing to fans and and rival fans, or do you think Chelsea are? being a little bit messy and a little bit scattergun with their approach here. Yeah, sc scattergun is definitely the word of that. That's the operative word. It's a very good transfer from a financial perspective because it means that it facilitates the whole Gallagher leaving. That means you get 40 million pounds of pure profits on the accounts. But from a football perspective, it's a, it's a very odd transfer because they clearly didn't want to do it initially. Otherwise, that would have been the initial situation. Uh, again, they're only doing it to facilitate the sale of Gallagher. And when you're uh, when, when you're making transfer decisions based on that aspect of the game rather than a footballing aspect, then I think at the top level, that's fundamentally a bad transfer, to be honest. Chelsea don't need Jao Felix. I'm thinking of all the other players like you know Unkunku and Palmer who are going to be wanting to operate in the spaces that Jao Felix wants to operate in. Um yeah, he, he's just not a, he's not the sort of player they need. He's also an entirely different profile of player to the striker they were initially going to get. I think that's another worry. 
if it was like a similar type of player, it would make sense because they clearly would have had, right, this is what we want in our heads. Therefore, we're going to go for this sort of player. But no, they've just pivoted to a totally separate player. And again, the, we all know the only reason that's happening is so that they can actually sell Gallagher for a PSR purposes, as I say, for the £40 million profit from the academy player. So yeah, it's Scattergun. It's desperate. It is uh, odd squad building. Um, and I don't know what Maresca is going to make of his squad next season. He's going to have, uh, I believe he's probably going to encounter the same issues, you know, Potter and Potch encountered RE, bloated squad, lots of players who are who will demand a certain amount of league minutes, but they won't be able to do that purely from a, a, a number of bodies perspective. Uh, yeah, it's it's a very odd transfer from a footballing perspective, but not from a financial one. Yeah, they could have gone for Jar Felix yeah, from the very beginning. Why, why, why go for Omar Dion? Yeah. Because, because, they don't, because I think yeah. fundamentally they don't really want Felix. They wanted this other chap. That's what Otherwise, I'm saying. As, as you say, exactly. They would have just come for Felix immediately. Uh, yeah. So that, it's all, it's all to facilitate. Have... Could yeah, it be? Can I, can, can, I, can I defend Chelsea here a little bit and, and throw out a, a scenario? Could it be that they are now closer to the victor? Because what never made sense to me was them signing Amorodian and Osiman. They were reporting they were looking at both. But could it be that they've maybe made some breakthroughs with the Osiman deal? And they've decided we don't need Samu now. So let's cancel this deal. But now they have to take somebody. Otherwise, they can't get rid of Conor Gallagher as an example. So it's almost a case of let's bring someone in like Zhao Felix, have him for a year or so. If he doesn't deliver, we can sell him. Because if they then go and get Osaman, then that looks like a really good couple of deals in terms of the quality coming in. Well, you know how you could stumble into a good thing, right? So, you know, maybe this is not what you intended to do, but it just ends up working for the best. I think um, especially the way that Maresco wants to play, like Samu, he's a like he's a eh, striker, like he, he's more so a pace and power, but he has no kind of first touch, none of these things. I think Jao Felix is just a better player than him, and his value is in like the gutter right now. It, it seems like nobody really wants him. And maybe Chelsea at first thought he was gonna go to Aston Villa because I know that that's who's kind of been in for him. Uh, so maybe they're like, ah, like we don't want to get into like a bidding war. But maybe Al Felix said like he doesn't want to go to Villa. So now they're like, okay, well then maybe we could bring you here. Now we don't want this uh the Samu guy. I'm thinking like maybe it could be something like that. But again, I, they just don't really need him per se. But I think he is a good player for the squad. I, I think he helps everybody's squad um in the Premier League if they were to go sign him because he, he is a good yeah. player. But 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 based on what you said, Terry, let's assume that they stumbled on a good deal with Ossiman and they're like, we don't need Samuel anymore. Let's, you know, let's terminate this deal and let's get uh, Yao Felix. Like, my question is, what's the point of terminating the deal and making it hard for yourself? If you've made a breakthrough and you're going to pay the same amount of money, like you're offering the same amount of money you're offering for Samu for Yao Felix, what's the point of breaking that deal and making it hard for yourself? You know, sort just sort that out and then go get awesome man because you made a breakthrough there. And then say to yourself, hey, one of you is going on loan. We've paid for you. You're here now. You're our player. You can go on loan here. Now, whether Samu wants to do that or not, at that point, that's left to him. Um, they could have easily done that without complicating the issue. Like trying to terminate this deal to then get the Yao Felix deal done just because they need the Gallagher deal to go through because it's pure profit and that pure profit, you know, benefits them PSR wise and they've made a breakthrough on Austin Man's side. It's just, it's that's why I said it's confusing. It's just way too much going on. Um, you know, I'm only looking at it based on what we see from the outside. So, um, yeah, but Yao Felix as a player, I think, yes, I think he's a step up for them. And so I, I, I won't, I won't um, knock them for getting Yao Felix. That's a, that's a good deal player wise. I'm not going to knock you for getting Yao Felix, but, just the way it's been done, it's just a, it's too scatterbrain. It's just way too scatter. Like just let the mm -hmm. Samu deal go through, go do your cement deal, and just loan out one player. I mean, like just simplify your life. If you really want the Gallagher deal to go through, why would you then do that to Atletico and say, oh yeah, well we want to cancel this deal and we want this? Now Atletico is upset. They could turn around and be like, take Gallagher back. We don't care. Like why? They, why? They, they, I think they want the player though. I, I know they, they do, but I'm saying I, I, I know they want it, but I'm saying if somebody starts antagonizing you, you've already had a deal, like you, you start making things difficult. I, I I want the player, but not to the detriment of my club. If I were Atletico and you're you giving know, me all of this press, I could turn around and be like, I don't need it anymore. Let's just you know, go, but then why is all the blame whole, on this whole transfer? This it's not the blame is not on them, we're just saying, like you so think about it. You that's why I said if Samu failed his medical, then Chelsea have a right. I totally agree with Chelsea to carry on and say we can't do this deal. If the player fails his medical, what's the point of doing the deal? But if it's because 
of any other reason, like any other random reason, I think they just overcomplicated it for themselves. So the blame is not on them. It's just like you're overcomplicating something that could have been simple. That's all, you know, that's how I look at it. So apparently yeah. Chelsea journalists, Chelsea journalists came out and said, said that apparently they tried to, um, fit, uh, they tried to add on some stuff to the deal is what I heard like today. At yeah, least, I've heard all sorts. I've heard that. The last couple of hours. Yeah, I've heard that they tried to buy half his image rights. It didn't go down well. I've heard a number of different things. Mm. My gut feeling is Chelsea have changed their mind about Samuel Amorodi. Yeah, and they they found a way of getting themselves out 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 of the deal. Do you think Henry? This is going to work out for Chelsea. They're going to be in a, a net positive in terms of quality in their squad and therefore in in, in, in improving their performances. I think it'll improve their performances. Uh, Neto is a great player. Boosby Hall kind of fits the system, but they're 187 million euros in so far. If they're going to get Ossiman and two other players over the line, you're probably looking at north of 250. They're not in. They're not in like the biggest of European competitions. Rotation. Like, how, how many more attackers can they get in their squad? A couple of them surely have got to leave. Like, I'm looking at Sterling. I'm looking at Mudrick, even Jackson. Like, if they're going to bring in a Victor Ossiman. Where does that leave him? You know, it's a. It's. I know only probably 15, 10% of their players they're going to sign will actually be around. It will just be if they don't perform, sell them on in the future for a financial gain. But they've really got to get in the top four this year or get as close to it as they can. If they have another year of finishing in around the Conference League, this this level of spending can't continue. Like, other than Pedro and Neto, how many of their signings actually get in their 11? Neto and, and Dewsbury Hall. Does Philippe Jorgensen start? Amari Kellerman? Aaron Alessano, Renato Vega. Where does be half fit in? Probably replace Gallagher. But Gallagher wasn't going to be starting for them. Well, this is the thing. What's Chelsea's best midfield? It, like, the board have come out. Like so Enzo, Caicedo, and... Yeah, so Enzo, Caicedo, and Kunku. It was, there was... All right, so, was so we're saying Gallagher. they've done 189 million euros and the only one who actually they've signed gets in their 11 is Pedro Neto. And he can only play 15 games a season anyway. 